I want to call, screw you, Mr. Corporation Man. <laughs> As I've said, the best way for us to screw over the very people that are making our lives hard is not to buy their shit. Right. And we have to buy some of their shit, but we don't have to buy as much. We need to quit this mass consumerism. That's not a real economy. Buying a bunch of crap we don't need, not using everything. One of the ways we've gotten our planet in the shape it is, is that we just waste so freaking much. Okay, so if little pan over, this is our outside grill that of course I built out of reclaimed brick that they threw away at the school and when Lynn was still teaching, she brought it home, a whole truckload of brick. And that's where this came from. Um, I just modeled it on an old Mayan step temple, the chimney, and uh, we kind of like it. But anyway, I had a bunch of wood that had fallen out of the trees and I just throw it in there and then when I grill, I sometimes throw on some stuff like the pear wood that I cut this summer. But of course, what I did was I used it to boil chicken cuts with. Yes. Okay. Now the chicken, the dogs have had a two and a half day feast of chicken uh, intestines and hearts and gizzards and chicken feet and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. By the way, don't feed chicken feet to your little bitty teeny teacup dogs. Don't feed your big dogs chicken feet unless you boil them till the bone will literally come apart in your hand. Because that's otherwise it's going to get in their intestines, going to cause trouble. At any rate, so I boiled all that. That's what they've been dining on. Okay, the broth was left over. The broth kind of smelled funky. It's been a couple of days, but not going to hurt a dog. A dog can can eat carrion. Right. So, but doesn't matter because I took the broth, I added water to it, I put it on top of my stove, I started boiling it. Now, when you store as much food, as much dry goods as we do, and you get dry goods from railroad damaged supply places, every once in a while, you're gonna get weevils. It's why I never put more than three or four bags of stuff in the same closed tight container, and I always put them in airtight containers, which I will show you at some point. But at any rate, I wound up with four bags of rice that had weevils in them mm -hmm. um, in my deep storage. Well, I'm not going to waste that. I put my big chicken gut pot. Well, it's not just chicken guts. I also do deer guts and shit in it for the animals. But at any rate, I boiled it on my outside stove, mm -hmm. and I made an entire bag of that rice. And now I'll have two or three more days of food for the dogs. Now, how does that screw the corporations over? Because otherwise, I gotta buy dog food. That dog of ours, that big dog, eats us out of house and home. Right. Every time I pour dog food out. Wait a minute, no. Every time I'm pouring dog food out to those dogs, especially in the middle of this thing where I have to go and risk life and limb to go and get dog food, every time I'm doing that, I'm thinking, well, I'm feeding the corporations, I'm feeding the corporate man. But this week, I'm going to have about seven days where I'm not feeding the corporate man at all. But the dogs not, are eating the well. The dogs are eating better than they normally eat. Right. And I'm not having to give the corporations a single penny. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you some other ways that you can say, fuck you, Mr. Corporation Man. Sounds wonderful. So in the last three days, over the last three days, I finished cutting all my winter's firewood. I slaughtered and butchered out 21 pounds of chicken meat. And I dug up and processed, well, about four quarts of garlic. Right. Okay, so I have lots of garlic puree. So I told them, told Lynn and Mom, I said, if nothing else all winter long, we'll be going to the wood stove, putting a pot of chicken and garlic on, and we'll have chicken garlic soup. There you go. But we know I also have a freezer full of food and a whole storm shelter full of dried goods. Okay. So, how we screw Mr. Corporation Man, this pot of soup, mm -hmm. when I get done, I will have paid nothing for it. Right now, it's simmering with the herbs and the garlic from our garden, and two pieces of the old stew hen I killed in the middle of the summer, <laughs> because she was not doing well. And so I went ahead and butchered her. And uh, so, 
That's what we're having for dinner. Screw you, Mr. Corporation Man. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to show you something else. In fact, I'm going to show you two things that are bathroom things you can do that will save you money and make you not have to feed the corporations. Of course, we haven't flushed the toilet for a while, so I'll need to flush that. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to show you real quick is how, and since I already brushed my teeth once, I'm not going to brush them for very long because I'm mostly doing this as a demonstration. So if you're like us, most bathrooms, you brush your teeth in the same room that your toilet's in. If you're smart, you keep your, toilet, your toothbrush in things so you're not flushing bacteria on your toothbrush. Okay, so what do I do with the toothbrush? Okay, watch this. Okay. See our toilet bowl? Now that it's gone down, you can see it's got a little bit of stuff in it. Not bad. And I'll show you why. Every time I brush my teeth. <laughs> oh, right in the door. I want my shower in the eye. How many people put out an eye with their toothbrush? That takes talent! <laughs> okay. Now look at my And it's still spinning in the sink, which is just gonna plug up my drains, actually, by the way. Instead of spinning in the sink, I spit in the commode. Okay. Same, same with if I'm doing mouthwash, I'm doing mouth rinse. Same thing. Okay, so you do it like I've got a fluoride rinse here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do use it, spit in the commode. Now why am I doing this? Because you know what I don't spend money on? Toilet bowl cleaner. Mm -hmm. Because fluoride, if it'll clean the enamel of your teeth, guess what? It'll clean the enamel of your toilet bowl. I don't know if she can get a close up, but you can see it's kind of dirty. Watch that. That's nothing in the world but toothpaste that I just spit out of my mouth and the fluoride rinse from brushing my teeth. And now my toilet bowl is clean. <laughs> It's also very good for the septic. It's, yeah, it's not going to mess up your not septic. It's not going to mess tank. your septic. Okay, tank. and here's another thing about if you're one of those people who never clean your fucking toilet with a brush, which, by the way, shame on you, and you just have a messy, grungy looking nastiness, if all you do is spit in your commode every time, mm -hmm. it'll get rid of part of that and it'll at least kill part of the bacteria. Okay, so here's our last screw you, Mr. Corporation Man. Yeah. So this tub had holes in it. I don't know if Lynn can zoom in on them. This tub had holes in it where the enamel had come off. They didn't go all the way through when we bought this fucking house 28 years ago. And I kept waiting for that mythical time when I was going to have the money to be able to put in a brand new tub. That still hasn't <laughs> happened in 28 years. Okay. 29. So... 29. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. I know. So what do I do? Well, you can use appliance paint and for a bazillion years I used appliance paint. Okay. During the apocalypse, we ran out of appliance paint. So I thought, what the hell, Lynn, do you have any white fingernail polish? And she did. Okay. White fingernail polish that I got at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Or appliance paint, which I have to pay six dollars for. Guess what? I used this in the tub when the rust came through this time. It worked better than the appliance paint. <laughs> it was easier to use and it worked better. And it dried faster and everything And it else. dried faster and it matches the cup, tub color better. Yes. So, there you go. Screw you, Mr. Corporation Man. <laughs> Over now.